Good afternoon. My name's Alvin. I'm sitting out here at camp on such a beautiful day, and I'm going to talk to you Wolf Scouts about the call of the wild adventure. Now, I know you love to get outdoors, love to go camping, and all the great fun activities you can do on your campouts. So, let's just jump right on in to the requirements for call of the wild. Now, requirement number one is just that. Attend one of the followings, which is your camps. It can be with your family or your pack. It can be a day camp. It could be a cub resident camp. But the important thing is just to get out there and camp so you can do a lot of these activities and have fun. Now, before we go to camp, we want to be prepared for what might happen. So let's talk about requirement number two. It says make a list of possible weather changes that could happen during your outing according to the time of the year. Now, this is the fall of the year and today's a beautiful day. The got a nice little gentle breeze blowing. But you know, even though it's nice and warm today, when the sun goes down, it's going to get a little bit chilly. So some of the things we may consider bringing is long sleeve shirt to put on, a jacket, and even though it's nice and beautiful, very few clouds in the sky today, it could hit some rain before we leave. So always bring your rain gear. Okay, now there's other seasons that you may be out camping also. Spring and summertime. Now, Remember, in the spring, you can still have some chilly weather, so you want to make sure that you're still dressing in layers. Summertime, you want to get ready. The weather's warmer, so you want to wear appropriate clothing for the summertime for the weather, but you also want to make sure you have your six essentials, and one of those is your suntan lotion and your hat. Okay? Now, what might happen in the summertime and springtime with the weather, you may have a sudden pop-up thunderstorm. So make sure you've got some good rain gear, waterproof boots and stuff. Now, since we're talking about possible thunderstorms in the spring and in the summer, let's just go ahead and jump down to requirement number four, which says, in case of a natural disaster such as an earthquake or flood. Now when you're going camping, you've got to look about where you're putting your campsite. If you're in a low area next to a creek or a river and there's a thunderstorm, it don't even have to be close to you. It can be off in the distance. And it may cause that creek or that river to rise very quickly. So you need to know about your campsite before you go. And if there's any possibility that you're going to be flooded, you need to maybe consider camping at higher ground or really keeping an eye on that stream so it doesn't come up quickly in the middle of the night on you. Now, before you actually go on your outing, sit down with your parents, your den leader, and go over each item that you're going to need to take with you. Now, now we go into the camps or any outdoor activities, we want to make sure that we leave the area just as good or better than it was before we got there. So we're going to talk about requirement number three, recite the outdoor code. So, Flip to the back of your book, and we're going to talk about the outdoor code here. As an American, I will do my best to be clean in my outdoor manners, be careful with far, be considerate in the outdoors, and be conservation-minded. Okay, we're also going to touch on the leave no trace principles for kids. Know before you go. Choose the right path. Trash your trash. 
Leave what you fight. Be careful with far. Respect wildlife. And be kind to other visitors. So when we're in the outdoors, we want to enjoy it, but we don't want to damage it. Okay, Wolf Scouts. We've enjoyed a great outing in the outdoors. We've been to camp. Now, requirement 3C says, after your outdoor adventure or camp out, lift the ways you demonstrated being careful with far. So we're sitting around the far pit here at camp, and you notice that our far pit has far bricks all the way around it. That's one of the ways that we make sure that this is a location of the far and it doesn't get any bigger than this. Now, as we look around the ground here outside of the far pit, we've got an area that's kind of blocked in with logs and benches for people to sit on and enjoy, but it also serves as a couple of other purposes. Now, when we have a campfire, it's very good. We can, the adults can cook on it. It's warmth. We can have our campfire program around it. And it's just a good morale booster. But we want to be very careful with it. We want to make sure that it stays here. Now, around this area, inside of the benches, we've taken our time to rake it out real good so there's no dead leaves in here. That might, ember might catch it on fire. Now, another thing we want to do, we want to respect this campfire. So, with these benches and these logs sitting around here, we can make a little rule. No horse playing inside these benches. Because if you get in here close to the campfire and you're carrying on horse playing, you can get hurt very easily. Now, there's other things we want to do to make sure we're safe with this. Once we put a piece of wood inside onto the far, it stays there. We don't want to be taking it in and out. We don't want to take a stick and try to poke it with it and then watch the flames on it. Once it goes in, it stays there. Also, you should never be putting anything on the far unless there's adults around. Now, when nighttime comes, we don't want to leave this far burning because there's nobody out here to keep an eye on it. We want to make sure it's out. Now, a lot of people think we can just make sure it's out by letting it burn down. And once we see the flames go away, they think it's out. But inside of here, is a lot of heat. So what you want to do, once the flames is all the way out, you want to make sure that you pour plenty of water and not just pour water over it and walk away, but pour water in there, stir it up real good, mix it up so the water gets to everything. And the way to make sure that it's good and out and it's safe is to hold your hand down close to it. If your hand's down close to it and you feel no heat, then it's pretty safe to know that it's out. Now, even if it's in the daytime and you got a campfire going and you're going to walk away from your campsite for a while and nobody's going to be around, once again, let's make sure that it's out completely. You can always start another one when you get back into camp. Now, Dangers of far is not just right here around the far circle that we've got a wood fire burning, but when you're cooking also, whether you're cooking with charcoal and a Dutch oven or a grill or a gas stove, that is still a hot flame and you need to be careful with it. So make sure that before you put a pot on your camp stove that this camp stove is good and sturdy and level. And again, no horse playing around the camp stoves, okay? Well, Wolf Scouts, I hope that you enjoy your outing with either your family or your pack. And it's great to be alive in scouting. 
Okay, Wolf Scouts, we're on to requirement number five in Call of the Wild. Now, requirement number five talks about how to tie an overhand knot and a square knot. Well, we're going to start with the overhand knot. That's a pretty simple knot. All we do is take a rope, make a little loop in it, and pull it through. Now, I know that is a little quick, but we're going to get a close-up view of that now. So we take our rope, and just make a little loop in it. And just pull it through. Okay. Now, now we're going to talk about a square knot. Square knot's a very important knot. And before I show you how to tie it, we're going to tell you a little bit about why you may use it. If you've got two pieces of rope and you want to join them together, a square knot is a very good knot to do that if the two pieces of rope are of the same size. Now the same size does not talk about how long they are. It talks about how big around they are. So here we got two pieces of rope that's the same size. We're going to join them together so we have a longer rope. So, very simple. I take my right, go over the left, and then I take the left and go over the right, and I have a square knot that is very good at holding these two ropes together. Now, Let's look at that close up and take our time. So here we go. My right rope goes over top and just wraps around. Now my left rope goes over top, comes back through, and then I lay them side by side and I pull all of them. Now, if you notice, you can tell a square knot's tied correctly whenever the ends of the rope are both on top on your knot. And this is a knot that will hold real good when you put pressure on it, but it's very easy to untie. You just have to slide it out. So there you are with your square knot. So get you a couple of pieces of rope and practice until you're really, really good with this knot.